Was the letter real in Verity? I think Verity is Hello everyone, this is Open Book with Betty's Booklist, the show where your favorite authors are an open book and talk all about their exciting new releases. Today, I'm here with one of my all-time favorite authors, Colleen Hoover. Colleen is the number one New York Times bestselling author of 22 novels and novellas. She's the creator behind the Bookworm Box subscription service and through that has donated over $1 million to people in need. Her new release, Reminders of Him, is out now, and I can confirm it is phenomenal. You're the one that does the videos, right, of the, like, you, you pretend? I pretend I'm the main character and do the video yeah. in the first person POV. <laughs> so my kids, they don't read my books, but my oldest, he's 21, he came to my office and he goes, hey, I have a question. And I was like, yeah, he goes, is Verity a true story? <laughs> and I said, no. And he goes, oh, it's not. And I said, no. He goes, well, I saw this video that made it sound like it, it really happened. And so then he pulls up your video and he had watched it and he's not a part of book talk at all. And so he had no idea what it was, but it made him so interested. He asked for a copy and he's actually reading it. Oh my God. That's the funniest so thing ever. Not based on the fact that his mom wrote it or anything. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing people tell me all the time. They're like, yeah, I'm not a reader. I hate reading, but your video like tricked me into it, you know? <laughs> okay, quick break, because I want to tell you all where you can get the first Colleen Hoover book I ever read. It ends with us. Book of the Month is a subscription service where they select five books from different genres, and you can pick one or more each month to get delivered right to your door. It is the best price ever for a hardcover book, and they never miss in their selection. It Ends With Us is available in hardcover as an add-on, and if you use the code Let's Go, then your first book is only $9.99. I've read almost all of your books like in one sitting because I like them so much. I could buy them in one sitting. That would be the dream, right? My uncle was in the hospital and he was telling the nurses there that I write my books in 16 hours. I don't know where he got that, but he was telling every single nurse. And my mom heard him at one point and she was like, why are you saying that? It takes her six months to a year. And he goes, I swear it only takes her 16 hours. And I don't know what he was thinking. What's your writing process like? I am such a mess. Like I don't keep a schedule. I try not to make this feel like a job. And so I don't like to schedule writing or have any kind of certain process. I write when I'm in the mood to write. I did hear you like to wear new socks when you write though. That's a fun I habit. Do. I have a problem. Like I like fresh new socks. And when I have a writing day, like, I don't know, it just got in my head that I can't write unless I have a fresh new pair of socks. So I have, um, I donate a lot of socks to Goodwill. I was also wondering if you could tell me a bit about your new book, Reminders of Him. I did read that one in one sitting too, because I liked it so much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So Reminders of Him is about um, a woman named Kenna who uh, yeah, made a mistake in her past, a really heavy mistake and um, had to go to prison for it. And the book is not so much about that, but once she gets out and trying to reunite with um, a child that she had and yeah, it's just kind of a sad book. I was in a mood when I wrote it. I started it in 2020 when the world was a dumpster fire and uh, I, I'm not saying it ends sad, but the journey is sad for sure. What inspired you to write it? I honestly have no idea. I remember struggling so hard with a book I did in 2020 that I had about six different stories outlined. And that just happened to be one of them. And I kept it, the outline was a lot funnier than it turned out to be. I was shooting for a romantic comedy and then that, that didn't work out. I just don't think I was in the mood to write anything funny. Like there's not really any huge twists or anything. It's more just about the characters and the journey they go through. I think I'm known for having these like shocking twists in a lot of my books. Um, but yeah, this one doesn't really have that. I guess it's not a twist, but finding out what happened at the accident was definitely something yeah. I had so much anticipation for. Yeah, that one was tough. And that's a scene I, I didn't really go over a lot. You know how I was saying that I edit and then and then write and then edit and then write. I would skip that one a lot because I didn't like reading it. I understand that. There's one scene in my book that I always am like wanting to skim through it when I'm revising because it's just like intense. Yeah, yeah. How do you make flawed characters so likable? 
That's a good question. I guess it means you like them. I definitely <laughs> like them. We're all human. We're all flawed. Writing perfect characters for me, it would be boring because I like the flaws in people. I actually have the word flaws tattooed on my arm right here. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in reminders of him, there were so many reasons we could dislike her. But I still ended up liking her in the end. I think with her, you know, it's just one of those things where um, we can have these really bad, awful days that can shape our whole lives. And it hap happens to a lot of people. And it's hard not to judge them based on those days. But I think it's important that everyone gets a chance, you know? Yeah. So do you generally like think of an idea, outline it, and then sit on it and decide which one you want to delve into? I usually don't like usually I have an idea I'm excited about it and I and I go with that do you think if we looked at like your final book and then that first outline that you started with it would be like obvious it's the same book or does it feel like a totally different story by the end I don't know that this one would be obvious because the character names even changed in the middle of it so probably not <laughs> but the outline for me it's more of like, I feel like sometimes I struggle with ideas and writing and coming up with stuff and then wasting time writing stuff I'm never going to use. But I've learned to look at it like I write, you know, dozens of pages and may only use one sentence or one idea out of those dozens of pages that ends up, um, you know, either sparking another idea for something that goes in the book or ends up, you know, prompting a whole new book. It makes me feel better because when I was writing the first draft of my novel, I cut like 200,000 words. Like I cut everything, a ridiculous okay. amount. It hurts because you're like, oh, all this work, I've spent so long working on it and now I'm just going to throw it away. But, you know, sometimes we have to do that. Sometimes you have to write 200,000 words to get 10,000 words that you actually use. How long do you revise for? Uh, I don't do a lot of revising actually because once... Once I mess with the outline and figure out like kind of where I'm going to go with the book, then I'm, I am a huge self editor. So I'll write a chapter, then read it and edit it and then write chapter two and read and edit those two. So by the time I get to the end of it, it's usually pretty close to what, um, what comes out other than the rounds of edits I go through with the publisher where I change things. What gives you like the basic ideas? Like, are you inspired by your own family, by people you know? It's everywhere, really. Like, I'm just, I, I think when you have the imagination as a writer or as someone who wants to be a writer, you kind of find inspiration in everything. You could turn anything into a story. I actually try really hard to avoid using anything from my real life. I think the only time I've really done that is with It Ends With Us. So are none of the love stories based on your own relationship? No, not at all. <laughs> I met my husband when I was 16. We got married when I was 20. We've been together. I'm 42 now. That's a long time. I don't know how to math. Um, he's wonderful, but like, we're not romantic. You would think that, I, you know, I write romance books, but I remember one time he bought me flowers and I got so mad at him. I was like, that was $50. We have bills to pay. Well, you know, I didn't think I liked romance until I started writing it. My, my mom and my sisters, when I wrote Verity and they read Verity, they were all like, there you are. We, we don't know where the romance comes from. Like that doesn't seem like you, but the psychotic part of your writing seems more like you. I don't know what that says about me. But Was the letter real in Verity? I wrote Verity from Lowen's perspective. I was never in Jeremy's perspective. And the only perspective I was in with Verity was her manuscript. And so at the end, you know, when Lowen was confused, I was confused. And I know people don't believe that, but I really was. When I was writing that, I was like, oh my gosh, what is real? What is not? Because that book is just from that one character's perspective. Um, but if I had to pick, I think, I think Verity is evil. I really do. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, I tend to agree. That was what I thought at the end too, but I know people are so divided on it. Is there anything else that you want to tell everyone? Tell book talk, booktube, bookstagram? <laughs> well, as far as book talk, thank you for this wonderful, wonderful year. Go read reminders of him, everyone. It was amazing. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe now so that you don't miss a single episode of Open Book.